Hello, I'm Bradley. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about something which a lot of people strive for. In fact, you will struggle to find many people who have not strived for it. Do you have fine hair? Do you have thin hair? Do you have thinning hair? Let me show you, let me share my tips with you on how to gain thicker hair. Now let me just be straight up with you and say these are not scientifically proven, they are not by a medical professional, I am not a specialist, but what I did have was fine hair, thin hair in places. And you know what, over about a year, 18 months, in the last in that sort of time period, I have really transformed my hair, and more so in the last nine months, my hair has really thickened up. My hair looks super full and thick now. Some of it is smoke and mirrors, some of it is tricks of how I've learned how to style my hair, but it is thicker. Let me really show you how I can help you achieve thicker hair. Let's start off where I know a lot of people start off when they talk about thicker hair, but it is indeed diet. Diet. Okay, so what we put into our bodies, of course, is a huge deal of how our body is and our, of course our health. I truly do believe from the bottom of my heart that good hair is the subject of good inner health. Okay, so when I say that, I mean that when you are having problems with your hair, it's really vitally important to, number one, start off with what are you consuming? Are you consuming a healthy diet? And really answer yourself that. It is a struggle sometimes, and I do hear that very often when I'm watching TV or if I'm looking, at, or if I'm looking online or if I'm finding um, sort of stories and things online or even from my comments on my channel. You do hear that a lot. You do find in our modern world that having a well-balanced, healthy diet is difficult. But you know what? Small changes make huge differences. First things first, if you are not in a position to change your diet, supplement your diet. But what I really would like anyone who's watching this to do and they're worried about their hair, firstly, have a chat with a medical professional first of all, because that's vitally important. Once you've done that and you've got the all clear that everything in your body is fine, because what happens is they usually run some tests and things through with you, such as blood tests, and they will find that everything has a good balance. Once that is, and you can leave the doctor's office, or if you've just had a bit of a chat with a pharmacist, um, literally, then start to reevaluate things. Have a look at your diet. Do you have a vitamin and mineral rich diet? Do you eat lots of fruits and vegetables? Do you have all those healthy things which we need to nourish our body, which is vitally important for good skin and good hair health? If you don't, and if, for example, that you don't like some of these things, have a look at supplements in your diet. Have a look, do some research. For me, a huge turnaround was Viviscal. Now, Viviscal do one for women and they do one for men. And they have a huge supplement, uh, core basis of the product of uh, Amino Mar C, which is the hero product in Viviscal. And it's personalized for men and women. So have a look at that. It is a little bit more of an investment, but in terms of really getting your health of your hair, your skin. It's a long process, but it absolutely does turn things around. And it certainly has made my hair thicker, fuller, and it's helped me realize better hair growth. And I am enjoying better quality of skin. So diet is absolutely huge. So starting to eat fruits and vegetables. And you know what? I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody needs to stop those unhealthy things in life, such as sort of fast food, chocolate, that type of thing. A life of moderation is much, much, much better, in my opinion, than stopping everything. So a life of moderation. I'm not saying to stop everything at all, and that's going to give you fantastic care, because it might not, but it's a good place to start. And as they say, your body is a temple. It's important to look after that. So everything in moderation, and really start to get a diet of rich of minerals and vitamins, and of course, plenty, plenty, plenty of water. It absolutely makes such a huge difference in terms of your skin, your general health, and your hair. Something I want to move on to now is in terms of when we visit the hairdressers, the barbers, the stylists, whatever you want to call them. Number one, what I want to just get straight out there is something which I have recently had done. If you've got fine thinning hair, okay, or if you've got fine textured hair, um, but you've got a lot of it, like me, something which they will always get you to try to do is have your hair cut into thinned out. And you know what, once or twice that can be good, but it is not going to solve your problems of making your hair look thicker. Having layers in women's hair does not make your hair look thicker. Having your hair cut into can help with movement, it can help with texture. But let me tell you something which you're probably going to absolutely hate. Having your hair cut into 
cuts away the weight of your hair and it makes your fine hair look even finer when you don't use products to show volume and texture and movement. I've recently had that done towards the end lengths of my hair. My hair now is towards my chin and sometimes in places it's a little bit shorter. It's the same length all sort of towards this length here but where I've had my hair cut into in about the first two three inches of the hair length unfortunately I've had the weight cut out so it actually is counterintuitive and it's made my fine hair Yes, it's got texture. Yes, it's got sort of movement, sort of character. If I use the right products, but let's be honest, very often that takes heat, that takes strong hairsprays, that takes products which, in a way, can go against us having thicker hair because we have to do so much more with it. So we're actually affecting the health of our hair. So stay away, for goodness sake, from having your hair cut into, thinned out, layered, whatever. Stop doing that. And you know what, what they try to get you to do, and I'm not against hairdressers at all because I have had the same hairdresser for many, many, many years. Recently, she has gone off onto maternity leave, so I have somebody who I've had for about nine to 12 months now, and I have a really good rapport with them, and that's vitally important when you're getting thicker hair. Let your hairdresser know. Don't let them go into automatic mode. Let them know that you're concerned and you want to try and grow thicker hair. They can help you with that. They can help you with blunt cuts. But what you want to do is stay away from cutting into your hair, and some people are going to absolutely hate this, but... Very often, if you walk into a professional hairdresser's or wherever you go to get your hair, barbers or what have you, they will say, have your hair cut every six weeks or every four weeks. Absolutely scrap that. You do not need to do that. Because if you think about it, what's actually happening, the hair you're growing through, you're having cut off. And in the next four weeks, time your hair grows through again, you're having that cut off. So theoretically, what could actually happen is your hair could not grow. And then you could even come up that little bit shorter. I've actually seen it happen with a family member who got in that sort of amazing sort of, well, you think it's amazing at the time of having your hair done and styled, and then you're having it done every couple of weeks. And actually, what, what you're actually doing is you're going backwards to what you're trying to achieve. So stay away from that. Absolutely. Stick to your guns with your hair. And do you know what? Sometimes eight 10 weeks is perfectly sufficient. Now, I know who am I to talk? I have short sides. I'm growing them out. I used to have my hair cut every two weeks. And you know what? Throughout this lockdown, I thought to myself, now, I like how my hair is getting thicker. Yes, I had an undercut, but it gives me a chance to experiment with longer hair. And that's what I'm going for. Even though I've got the sort of undercut style with lots of volume today, it's great to have those sort of, uh, that sort of box of all different styles for you to try. But Stay away from your hairdressers and, I don't mean hugely, just perhaps prolong your cuts two, three, four weeks and you will see a huge difference in your character of your hair and how your hair behaves. Honestly, it is a huge difference. Okay, next what I want to move on is I want to have a look at scalp health. Now you may note that who actually pays attention to their scalp? Now, this is one which I do very often forget, and I wrote myself a list by the side of me doing this clip today, because scalp health is so, so important. And actually, within the last six to nine months, I've noticed a difference in terms of the quality of my hair and the character of my hair and how much hair I lose through just taking time and actually switching off from worries, stresses, and when you wash your hair, concentrate on massaging your scalp, really getting the blood flow pumping to your scalp, and taking a moment to massaging your temples, the top of your scalp, and your crown of your hair, and the sides. Literally taking time to massage in a deep motion, and really getting the products which you're using, sort of if it be a shampoo, whether it be a conditioner, take the time to, number one, look after your hair, which you're doing, but what you're actually doing is that scalp massage is you're getting the blood flow pumping to the hair. And of course, you're getting all that richness, which is inside your body through your fantastic diet into your hair follicles. And it is really getting things moving. All, of course, that oxidative stress <laughs> in the body away from your scalp. And you're getting all of that sort of poor energy away from your scalp and you're really boosting your health of your hair. Now when I say poor energy, I mean the byproducts by testosterone which we all have in our bodies called DHT, which unfortunately is the culprit of hair thinning and hair loss and premature hair loss as well.
Very often what that does to us is it shrinks the hair follicle over and over and in the end the hair just cannot keep up and it falls away and it doesn't grow anymore. Hence male pattern balding and female hair thinning. So a huge thing, it's not going to cure it, but it is another tool in your armory of go-to to keep your hair as healthy. And you know what, I actually found that there was a few hairs which came through a little bit spiky, a little bit thicker in my hairline, just through taking the time to massage my scalp. And you know what, when you're stressed and you're really, really worked up, sometimes just take a moment in the shower, massaging your hair just feels great. And you know what, it helps your scalp, it helps the blood flow, it helps your hair, and it helps you feel a little bit better as well. Okay, so let's move on. A huge, huge thing about looking after your hair and gaining thicker hair is the way of which you style your hair. So what's really, really important is using the right products for your hair. So what you really, really need to be doing is you need to be looking at your hair. Does your hair lack volume? Does it lack texture? Does it sit so it's as flat as anything on your head? I know that seems what, that's what mine used to do. My hair is not super, super thin. It's fine. I have a lot of it. Some places it's a bit thinner than others, but using the right products. So if you're going and you're buying shampoos and conditioners and treatments and things for smoothing, what that's for straight off is for thicker hair and for really smoothing out the hair, smoothing out those frizzy hair textures. Perhaps you're buying a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. That is a no-go when you're trying to look after your scalp. You need to be using something either for thinning hair or for thickening your hair. And what's really, really, really vitally a absolute must to have a look at is products with caffeine in. Now you're going to be sat there and you're going to, see, going to be thinking, they don't work for me. Okay, so prevention is always better than cure, but caffeine-based products help keep hair stimulated and they help wake the scalp up and i do actually know i've been using alpazin on and off since i was 16 and i am 27 and i use the alpazin energizer caffeine liquid not all the time not even sometimes for weeks on end but when i notice my hair is getting a little bit lazy you could say a little bit sort of lacking in areas or i see a little bit more hair than what i'd like to i then go out and purchase the alpazin caffeine shampoo it doesn't have to be that it could be any other brand of caffeine shampoo leave it on for a couple of minutes when you're washing your hair wash it out use a volume boosting conditioner that's going to look after the fullness and the texture in your hair or if you can find it a caffeine based conditioner i use a tonic in my hair on and off such as the Alpazin uh, caffeine tonic. And what that does is that just keeps the follicles really boosted with energy and the caffeine gets down into the scalp, gets into those hair root cells and just guards anything which will be detrimental to your hair growth. It's not gonna solve hair growth uh, problems in terms of hair loss, but what it's going to do is it's gonna give you another tool to be able to keep thicker, fuller hair and you may even see a little bit of increase in the fullness and the thickness of your hair. A favourite of mine is by L'Oreal Professional Surioxal, and that is a system for counteracting thinning hair. There's a shampoo and a conditioner and a denser hair serum. Have a look at it. It's on my channel. And you know what? That really, 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 really turned my hair around in terms of getting thicker hair. Lastly, what I just want to mention about getting thicker hair is knowing when to stop. If you're using hairsprays, hair dryers, hair straighteners every single day, whether you're a man or a woman, sometimes just letting your scalp breathe and be healthy. If you're not going out, let the heat go to one side. Let your heated appliances have a rest and let your hair breathe. Put your hair in sort of a style which is going to look after your hair and your scalp. Perhaps just wash it, condition it, brush it off to the side if you're a man, let your hair breathe, let you have a day off. If you're a woman, put your hair in a bit more of a relaxed style, tie your hair back loosely, enough of the tension. Whether you're a man or a woman, if you've got longer hair, really, really, really go careful and go steady with the amount of tension you're putting on your hairline, because that's not gonna help you have the thickest hair possible either. And lastly, just to finish my clip, what I want to say is take time for you. Try and cut stresses, strains, worries, fears, out of your life and just breathe. A very good thing for this is mindfulness and really concentrate on taking a moment, concentrating on an image, whether it be a family holiday, whether it be a beloved family member and of a picture of them or a picture of you both, or it could be of your, your family pet or it could be of a holiday. Concentrate on that picture in your mind, close your eyes and breathe and concentrate on your breathing. 
Shut yourself away from your thoughts, your stresses, your strains of everyday life. Do that regularly and you're controlling the stress. And in turn, that's going to help with your body. That's going to help how you manage stress. And then eventually that is going to help with your hair. All of these tips is what really, really turned my hair around and made my hair much, much thicker. Didn't solve my problems at all. Every now and again, I get a day where I think to myself, goodness, what's happened? Because that's just life. But with these tips, you can arm yourself on keeping having the thickest hair possible. Lastly, which I did just forget what I do want to just mention is Viviscal for men. Have a look at that on my channel. I'm not represented by Viviscal, but I have a lot to be thankful for from Viviscal men. They have really transformed the areas in the temples of my hair, which you can see sort of fine hairs coming through. That's through me taking Viviscal and these measures which we've talked about. OK, I wish you the thickest hair possible in the coming months. Try out some of what we've talked about here. Have a look on my channel. I've got lots of tips, tricks, that type of thing in styling your hair as well, because, of course, that's vitally important. Have a look and please subscribe so I can share this with you as we come up against different things and different things on my channel in the future. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you then. Bye for now.